figure it out. And I just went over it and over it and over it and over it. Now I've got it. Here it is. Here's what they did. They lowered a balloon down onto a peripheral nerve. First of all, they had the cat under anesthetic. In traction pull under anesthetic. Then they slid his back open with a scalpel. Then they pulled back the fascia. Then they tore open the meningeal fibers. And then they lowered a balloon down onto the peripheral nerve. And they had an oscilloscope. Storage. And they just watched it. And they said, oh yeah, 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 boy, that four millimeters of pressure. Now we're exerting down onto the peripheral nerve and we've decreased the oscilloscope by 50%. Are you kidding me? Nobody, nobody ever checked the medulla oblongata of that cat. Now, let's look at it. First of all, you're never going to have this condition in your office where you're going to be unanesthetic with the fascia pulled back and the meningeal fibers torn back and somebody lowering a balloon down onto your nerve. So you don't have to worry about that. That's never going to be existing in your office. But even if it was, when they put the cat under anesthetic, in fact, I think just the time they caught the cat and screwed him to death, he was subluxated because he knew he was fixing to get it. <laughs> I mean, his innate told him that and related that to him. This is it, cat. <laughs> you know, that's a funny thing. I see you laughing, Dr. Harrison. I, lo I love it. It's a funny thing. Dr. Palmer, I told you there's things that Lyle told me that I've never told anyone about the things that Dr. B.J. was looking for. He already developed things where, okay, Doc, he already developed things where he said, when you, doctors, if you know why you're not getting some patients well, he said, when you walk into the room with your new patient, that patient's innate assesses you like the night Rider. And it says, this is a B chiropractor. This is a Z This is a zero chiropractor. My God put up all force fields. He's going to kill us. <laughs> or it'll say, this is an A plus chiropractor. You're all right, pal. We're going to get some help now. We're going to get some help. This man's going to help us. He's got it. See, we acted like we knew what we was doing, but see, that NA, that patient knew you didn't know nothing. It already picked it up. Related to the patient. B.J. was looking for that. He was researching that kind of research. You talking about research, pal. He was into it. All right. So, if the cat wasn't scared in the subluxation when they caught him, surely by the time they put him under anesthetic, he was subluxated. Or surely by the time, you know, they cut the back open. Or surely by the time they tore back the fascia. Or surely by the time, you know, uh, that they lowered the balloon down, he was subluxated at the atlas axis area. When that put pressure here, it reduced the oscilloscope here. When the pressure was induced, the subluxation occurred on the medulla oblongata. No mental impulse went to that area, and the oscilloscope dropped. I'm saying we could repeat that research and check that Addison axis and adjust that cat. That would stay the same, and then, of course, that trauma would resubluxate it. You could readjust, and that'd come back up, and you'd just have like that going, just like that right there. You see, that would be my hypothesis of what would happen because that was an insult to the medulla and the medulla was subluxated. In fact, you see Dr. Palmer said, no matter where uh, you introduce the force, you get well from an epicervical adjustment. And by correcting the atlas and axis, no matter where you introduce the force, it's got nothing to do with it. And here's a good example. I'll just show it to you real quick. Atlas axis, we draw some rings here, sacrum. There's a law of physics that states that force travels through matter from greater mass to lesser mass. A good example would be real simple. If you was at a restaurant and you had a big sugar container right here and you put the pepper over here, you can take the salt and just real easy slide the salt into the sugar. The sugar won't move and the pepper will move on the other side. Force travels from greater mass to lesser mass. So if a person falls, boom, it hits here, it goes to here 
Now, force don't go in here because force don't go from lesser to greater. It goes from greater to lesser. So this is disturbed right here. And we have subluxation on the medulla. So, therefore, a person has a wedge line here, and they uh, roll the person over and slam him or whatever. And uh, uh, the force travels up here, cracks the atlas and axis, this comes down, straightens that out, and they thought that's what did it. But it's because the force travels up here and relieved the atlas and axis subluxation, and then the body created a mental impulse to get that squared again. And they said, well, that feels kind of better now that you jerked that. Didn't do nothing up here. He thought. He thought. He didn't do nothing up here. No matter where it enters, it's fine. Stub his toe, fall off the building, sit on the bus, spin my stuff between the shoulders, whatever. Goes from greater to lesser mass. Goes on and on. See, BJ was coming out of an era where everybody was doing that. He said they're produced by remote control. So that's what you're doing down here. You're remote control adjusting the atlas. And he said, why don't you just move one up here and do it? Instead of trying to introduce the force down here. The subluxation specific is right there in the book. I didn't make it up. He said the more remote you enter it, of course, you might lose some of it. So why don't you just go on up there and put it where it ought to be? Post yards contact. He said, I got 10 minutes, I got to get ready here. We're torquing the torque, I'm torquing the torque subluxation.